there, it's Sam. And I'm here, I'm actually in uh, Toronto uh, seeing my guru, Amma, and I'm uh, making a quick video here. You might, you might hear an airplane fly overhead because um, we're not too far from the airport, but I'm talking about Rahu and Ketu changing signs. Now, based on whichever calculation for the nodes you use, Rahu and Ketu have changed signs. Um, according to the mean node, it was, I, be I believe it was Friday the 11th, and then the true node is like the 15th. So the nodes have either changed signs or they're about to change signs and move out of the Libra Aries axis into the Virgo Pisces axis. I'm actually doing a free web class on this very important change that you can register for. I'm going to talk about it here in this video, but um, it's a very important shift. But it's a free class, so I'm going to talk about that for all 12 signs. There's a link on this page for you to register for that. Go ahead and do it. I'm going to talk about Rahu and Ketu in a historical perspective and how they have behaved in the past in this axis, and then talk about it for each of the 12 signs and some other good stuff. So that includes yours. So whatever your sign is, it's important for you to understand this Rahu Ketu in Virgo Pisces axis. Now, in a general sense, this is a very good, you know, this is a very good um, transit for all of us. First of all, you know, sometimes the most important thing to know about a cycle is, you know, it's not necessarily what it is, but what it's no longer. Meaning, the fact that Rahu is now moving into Virgo means he's no longer joined Saturn. <laughs> So the last transit of Rahu through Libra was tough the whole way because it was also joined Saturn. We have an airplane coming. So Rahu Saturn was happening and that Rahu Saturn conjunction obviously made the whole <coughs> transit of Rahu through Libra a little tricky. And you know, Rahu creates illusion, he creates confusion around things, so it has to do with confusion in relationships and then with an exalted Saturn there we were really feeling the penalty or paying the price of our relationship mistakes. So that Rahu Saturn in Libra for the last year and a half since January 2013 was really a time when we were being pressured to improve our relationships and having confusion about how to do it and also really you might say suffering the consequences or paying the price for our mistakes in relationships. So just the fact that Rahu has left that, when I say it's good news, I mean all of it's good news, even that transit of Rahu through Libra with Saturn there, you know, with the exalted Saturn. It was a time of enormous growth and potential, but it was also stressful and painful and, you know, there's always a bit of a relief when two malefics are no longer joined. So it could have really affected certain things like health problems and, and other stuff that Rahu um, no longer joined Saturn is going to be a benefic um, influence. Now I want to talk about Rahu in Virgo and Ketu in Pisces. This is quite auspicious. Now, Rahu, I would say, unequivocally does best in Mercury-ruled signs. Rahu is said to be exalted in Taurus. I definitely can see that because it stabilizes the node. But, but stabilizing Rahu in, in some way is kind of like, you know, putting the monster to work on the same project over and over again, especially when it's about accumulating, you know, so it, it stabilizes Rahu, which means it's not as disruptive, but it's, it can also be quite materialistic and bring out some of the difficult qualities of Taurus, as an example. When Rahu is in Mercury ruled signs, though, because Rahu is very much about the head, there's another airplane, about the head that is disconnected from the rest of the body and the head that wants to eat and digest, but it's disconnected from the body and the larger realm of experience. You can see it this way. The head, which is like the illusion of information, or the illusion of you know this idea that oh I can get this, I, and having those ideas disconnected from the larger body of experience, which is what K2 represents. K2 represents all of our past and our past lives and past experience. You can see it this way: Rahu is that head that's going everywhere, trying to eat but not digest and being disconnected from the wisdom of our past experience. So when we get Rahu in a sign that's ruled by Mercury, this is very conducive with Mercury energy because Mercury moves through things very fast, very quickly I should say. He's also the part of us that wants to understand things intellectually. And this is very conducive for Rahu because Rahu is very much about the mind. It's very, very much about the illusion of ideas. You know, we can say that he eats, but it's not just eating food. Food is very gross. Rahu eats ideas and concepts and says, oh, this thing, that thing. And it's very much in the mind. And it's the illusion of the mind 
this illusion of information that we get through the mind. I talk a lot about the illusion of information um, and mistaking information for wisdom. Information is just the beginning. We gather information about something and it's exciting to our mind and stimulating to our mind, but it doesn't become wisdom until it's inculcated into our whole being, until we focus on it in a practical, methodical way through ritual and things like that. And this is what's so great about Rahu and Virgo. Virgo is the sign of ritual, routines, daily habits, every little detail that we must be grounded in. Here comes another airplane. Oh, it's a big one. Air Canada, big one. Let's see if we can get it. Did you see it? <laughs> anyway, so focused on every daily routine, every ritual, every moment, every piece of food we eat, every thought we have, every word we say, every breath you take, right? Everything. Virgo is watching. He'll be watching you, right? So having Rahu in Virgo is very much about bringing that kind of almost sort of madness to want to know the answer because that's why Rahu is seeking. He's seeking the answer. It's like the immature part of us that says, why? Why this? Maybe this? Maybe this? You can see right away how that's conducive with Mercury energy because Mercury will then, you know, try to figure it out. In Gemini, it's very good for, you know, for like higher um, intellect. In Virgo, it's very good for grounding our information into ritual and routine. So this is going to be for all of us. And this is, um, you know, going to be quite conducive for bringing um, those ideas and that information that you've gathered into a tangible, practical, usable form. Now opposite that is K2 in Pisces. Again, this is very, very powerful because K2 is really the mystic, the most mystical part of our experience. K2 is the part of us literally that's not of this world, the part of us that is had all of these experiences and that wants to really in many ways be, be free and be liberated from the shackles of the, of the world. And it's, it, it can have a very kind of rejecting nature, very rejecting of the world and of people in it and situations. But in Pisces, Pisces is the sign of that metaphysical communion with everything. First of all, it's also very mystical. So the mysticism, that mystical part of, of you that is related to K2 will, will, will be in a very conducive environment when it's in Pisces because Pisces is about the mysticism as well. No boundaries, not of this earth. And so the K2 part of you will be in its own, in its own environment where it really feels congruent with that. But also it takes away that like sort of tangled up um, fiery intensity of K2. K2 could be the most like rejecting, um, aggressive, like where we're just disgusted with something. Like we're, and it, it could be a very, very punishing part of our of our own nature. You want to see where you're the most punishing and the most rejecting and, and almost like intolerant. You would look at natal K2 there because it refers to things that that you feel like you've been there and done that, and you just have no patience for it. So K2 in Pisces can really open up that realm as well. So when you see this influence, this sort of this sort of interpolation between Rahu and Ketu, whereas Ketu is the mystic, Rahu grounds the mystic in practical details and rituals. Because Rahu is very much about our the activity of the world. So this is going to be an opportunity where we take that mysticism, that ancient mystic that ancient mystical bent of the past and ground it into the routines of the present. Because the mysticism is K2, the routines is Rahu in Virgo. And of course, whatever house this falls in in your chart, based on your ascendant, is going to be important. This is why I'm doing that web class. You want to, you want to register for that, it's free. And I'm going to talk about Rahu and K2. I'm going to talk about, of course, the signs of Virgo and Pisces, how it's going to behave there, give some examples of how it's been in the past and then also talk about it for each of the 12 signs because it's going to be like the 6th house for Aries, 5th house for Taurus, 4th house for Gemini and how that is really going to play out. Um, so this is just a quick overview. Um, it's a very important shift. It's shown a release of a lot of the kind of heavy relationship karma that we've been experiencing because we've had Rahu and Saturn both in Libra. And by the way, it, you know, that's also shown a lot of benefit. 
For instance, you've seen a lot of um, equal rights issues work out the last year and a half since we had Rahu Saturn in Libra, like for instance in India, all of this awareness around, the, you know, about women being raped and that, that whole kind of culture in India, in the U.S., all of this stuff that, you know, kind of mind-blowing legislation around gay rights and gay marriage, these issues have all come, uh, have all become tangible and worked through during Rahu Saturn in Libra, so it's been a very beneficial um, transit, you know, and socially, and it, sh it shows progress, but it shows progress around things that were screwed up before, for instance. And this can translate, of course, in your life with, it can show progress in your relationships, but it, it does it by often illuminating the mistakes and the problems. Like I said in the beginning, everything is toward a beneficial end, but sometimes the path to that end can be very, um, you know, difficult when, when, it, when it comes through to malefic planets. And the reason the outcome has been good is because we've had an exalted Saturn doing this. Now, a few things are also shifting. You know, we just had Rahu Saturn cross in the sky. So just as soon as Rahu leaves Virgo, Saturn, and I'm sorry, as soon as Rahu leaves Libra, Mars enters Libra. So we're going to have a Saturn-Mars conjunction for the next month and a half. I'll talk about that a little bit later, but we might still really feel some explosive relationship stuff going on because um, Mars has just entered Libra with Saturn. So it's kind of out of the pan and into the fire a little bit on the short term, but um, at least we have a shift from Rahu out of Libra and into Virgo and then Ketu out of Aries into Pisces, which is much more mystical and much more, you know, as I'm calling it, practical mysticism, like mysticism grounded in ritual, routine, because that's really where we need to um, that's where spiritual growth happens. Otherwise, it's just religion. It's just believing in something. Even, and I don't mean religion like Christianity. That's not the only kind of religion. Religion is what you believe in. And you might believe in some kind of New Age philosophy. But if it's just belief, that's just the beginning. It needs to be grounded in routine and ritual. And that's what Virgo is about. So I'll talk more about that on the web class. I hope this was helpful. Share this with people. Let them know um, that this video is here.